She and Diddy dated famously from 1999 to 2001, and unless you were living under a rock back then, you will remember that in December of 1999, they were both arrested after fleeing the scene of a nightclub shooting in New York City. J-Lo was detained for 14 hours, and then she was released. Puff Daddy, that's what we called him back then before he became P. Diddy and then Diddy and then Sean. Uh, Puff Daddy Combs was tried and uh, he was acquitted of the weapons and the bribery charges. Um, it was not long before the couple split for good. It happened on Valentine's Day 2001 uh, when Lopez started to suspect that Combs was cheating on her. But when they were together, J-Lo's staff was around Diddy a lot. And a former member of that staff is opening up to the New York Post. The reporter she spoke to, a senior writer with The Post, happens to be our friend Steve Helling, who happens to be with me now live. Steve, it's good to see you. As always, I love when good you're on the program. You. And look at you. You are getting all the scoops today. I got so many things. I want to ask you about the J-Lo assistant. I want to ask you all about that. But first, this whole business about you talking to the agents um, who are you know, part of this, this raid and this investigation, and them you know, alluding to the fact that the, the witnesses, the alleged victims, are talking and a lot. Uh, tell me what you know. Well, as you know, Ashley, um, you know, Miami is my old stomping grounds. So, you know, I started reaching out to agents and, and I ended up speaking to one who said, yes, um, they actually have cooperating witnesses, cooperating alleged victims, you know, people who are willing to talk, um, you know, and and what this agent told me was basically, you know, at first everybody's reluctant, but once you start talking about being victimized or seeing victimization, uh, you just can't stop talking. And so that's kind of what's been going on here. You know, obviously, as they've been finding these people through the civil suits and so forth, they're starting to figure out exactly what was Diddy allegedly involved in. So talk to me about what they got. Were they able to um, sort of itemize what they seized, either in Miami or in Los Angeles? It was mostly electronics is what they were looking for. Electronics, records, communications, you know, photos, anything like that that could bolster whatever case that they've got. Now, they haven't told us exactly what they found or, you know, what's on these electronics, they probably don't know yet. This was only two days ago. And, you know, it's going to take some time for them to, you know, to really look into this. But yeah, they're looking for anything that can kind of give itineraries, um, you know, places that people were going, names of people. That's what they've been looking for. Oh, itineraries. When you said that, that that got my uh, spidey senses tingling because itineraries are oftentimes corroboration evidence of what, you know, other witnesses will say. Oh, well, I was on the plane and this happened. And then you find an itinerary that actually backs that up. I think we saw a lot of that in Epstein. Exactly. You know, there's a, there is a lot of uh, similarities here. You know, this case, if there is a case, and of course he hasn't been arrested yet, yeah. but if there's a case against him, it's going to rise and fall on what can be proven. And, you know, um, as much as we want to do, you know, victim testimony and that type of thing, it has to be able to be backed up. You know, I was in this city, I was in this country, I was wherever with Diddy. And so they're going to be looking to, to kind of retrace where he was during the periods of time that he's alleged to have done these things. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.